Welcome to another edition of the Rock and Rewind Podcast. Here's your host, James Poovey and Ray Miranda. Welcome to another edition of the Rock and Rewind Podcast. My name is James Poovey, alongside my co-host, Mr. Ray Miranda. Ray, how are you doing this evening, my friend? Hey, man, doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm ready to talk some rock and roll. We're going to talk about uh, a band that's near and dear to my heart. They spend a lot of time in my home state of Texas. Uh, that's where I was first introduced to them, a, three, a three-man a power trio uh, named King's X. King's X, yes. You know what? They're very unique. Very, very unique. Uh, and and you know what? There's some they're labeled as a um progressive metal band. Now, James, I gotta tell you, I um I progressive now now progressive metal, when I hear that, I think of Dream Theater and Camelot and Speaking Night of Wish. Dream Theater, I had to go ahead. I, had to I see that, that my going. friend. Yeah, I had I see to, that. Uh, this I was in the that. wash last week when we recorded the the winger <laughs> yeah. episode, so I had to. Yes. Uh, yeah, I to see that out of the dryer, but yeah, it's good good stuff. We got to go get some. Uh, we got to go buy some more concert teachers for these shows. That's yes. what I figured out here over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. But uh, that's so, okay. We can do that. Looking good, man. Looking good. But you know, speaking of progressive metal, okay. So this is what is kind of weird to me is uh, you know I think of Dream Theater and uh, Camelot and Nightwish and uh, you know, some of these other, uh, uh, what's the one with, um, not King's X, but uh, what's the other X band? There's another one. Uh, oh, Symphony X. Symphony and X, yes. There's an old band called Racer X, which um, yeah. they're, uh, they're Paul a little Gilbert more, was in yeah, from uh, they're the, Mr. Big. The, yeah, they're a little more neoclassical or whatever. But, yeah. uh, but, but, but so, you know, I, I looked up uh, progress. Well, when I think of progressive. I think of, you know, I'm a little older than you guys, but than you, but I think of, <laughs> I think of like Kansas. Yes. Yes. Genesis, uh, Pink Floyd. Rush. Uh, Rush is, is a pr- progressive band. Sure. So, sure. so, so when these guys are classified as progressive metal, I'm like, I don't know about that. They, they are, I guess, you know, whatever, man, whatever works for them. But they are definitely unique, and I love what they do. It might be a little bit of the technicality that they have when they play. You know, they're very good musicians, excellent musicianship in the band, Mm -hmm. and that could be part of what lends people to say, "Oh, they're progressive, progressive rock, progressive metal," because they they kind of they lend towards some of those bands like you mentioned, Rush and and Yes, and some of those those different chord structures and so forth and. Mm -hmm. I think you had, had done some research on that, uh, talking about uh, how they, ha- you know, Ty Tabor really plays a lot of mm-hmm. intricate stuff uh, when he's yeah. writing that music. Yes. Yeah, he does a lot of, um, you know, I, I don't know all my guitar theory and all that stuff, but he does a lot of weird, like, um, open jazz chords. Like, they're really weird fingering, and he does a lot of droning with his music, you know, which makes it sound very unique. And um, and then he's got that grunge sound. It's kind of grungy, yes, and and ninety-ish sounding, uh, but but it's fantastic. So it's you know, really we'll, good we'll, stuff. Yeah, we'll talk about a little bit more about that when we hit that th- those songs. And you know what else, Ray is crazy about the band? They've been around for a lot longer than you think. They started back in 1979. Even I, I didn't even hear of them until the late 80s. Is really when I discovered them. Uh, heard them first on Z Rock. Um, oh wow! I believe, I believe yeah. it was uh, "It's Love" was the first song I ever heard. Did, did you them. get that I little think it was dog on Z Rock? I did. I had the dog? metal militia oh, right, dog tag. Right. You better believe it. <laughs> Z Rock right. was out of Dallas, Texas, man. <laughs> Out of yeah, Gainesville, right on, man. yep, right That's north it. of Dallas. Right. So uh, that was pretty cool. Okay. Satellite radio, you folks, look that up. Uh, anyone checking this out, look up mm-hmm. the old Z Rock satellite radio station, and it was simulcast to all these cities uh, throughout yeah. the United States. And they played, I mean, they played good stuff. You know, early Metallica, Megadeth, um, Pantera, oh, Kansas, Dream yeah. Theater, Dream Theater, yeah. all, all the stuff, and. Uh, yeah. 
they had some really cool DJs on there as well. So uh, we might even we could do a whole show on Z Rock sometime. That'd be pretty fun. That'd be great. Yeah. But uh, that that's when I first heard of King's X, and uh, when okay. I when I found out there was only three of them in the band, I was I was blown away at the, at the musicianship because it was that was probably eight to ten years after I first started playing the drum. So I had enough time under my belt to appreciate what they were really doing, you know, on those records. Now, now, James, do you remember the first time you saw them? I'll tell you my first experience with them. Hit it. Uh, I went to see a band that we probably know pretty well, which is our buddies over there in Lillian X. Mm -hmm. Now, I went to see them out at a festival. It's crazy, man. Festival out in uh, Gilbert, Arizona, which, you know, it was weird because there wasn't a lot of people there. And so I went to see Lillian X, which... It was their um, their their second album, okay. Little and Axe's second album, and and then there was two other bands that opened up for him. One of them was uh, I want to say Glass House or some weird name like that. Glass Tiger, May, that might have been it. That might have been it. Glass Tiger, and then these guys here, Kings X, and I, I sat there and I had no idea who they were. And uh, I was listening, watching and listening. I'm like, man, these guys are fantastic. Three guys. And they looked very unique. I mean, you're talking about uh, Doug Pinnock, you know, and, and at the time he had a mohawk and everything. Mm -hmm. And you don't see too many people with mohawks uh, in, 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 in an 80, 90 band. Now, earlier, maybe you might have seen, seen that. Right. But yeah. um, at, that, at that point in time, I mean, especially with a band like Lillian Axe, uh, it looked a little out of place, but they were fantastic. And and I'm like, man, who are these guys? Uh, and um, and then that's how I kind of started following them a little bit. And then they, I found out they did some stuff with Dream Theater. There, uh, Doug Pinnock was on one of their albums, and uh, so so yeah, that's how I kind of got exposed to them. Yeah, he was a guest vocalist on uh, the Falling Into Infinity album for Dream yeah. Theater on the uh, yeah. Lines in the Sand, I believe. Yes. Was the track on yeah, that. man. You and, got uh, a good with that, memory, with that killer keyboard in there. Oh, man. Yeah. Such good yeah, stuff yeah, right yeah. there. And then, uh, you know, 2002, I, I'm reading the Phoenix New Times and I see August 8th, 2002 coming up. It's going to be Dream Theater, Joe Satriani, and King's X. All in one concert. I'm like, this is this is like my three favorite groups all in one night, and, and it was it was unbelievable, right? And I was the only one. Kings X was the first one that went on stage. Matter of fact, I've got. Uh, oh, this is actually from. Uh, this is the Dream Theater stick from that night, but I've got um, some Kings, a couple Kings X items as well. When I saw them in uh, Memphis, Tennessee which was back in 99. But anyway, I was the only one standing up in the front row rocking out to King's X because I had, I think it was like fourth or fourth or fifth row seats to the show. It was at Dodge Theater, it was called at the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And one that. of the radio stations from uh, Tucson walks over and says, hey, you, we look like you're enjoying the show. He goes, how about, how about uh, you go backstage after? You look like you're the only one out here rocking out. To, to You obviously know these <laughs> wow. bands pretty well. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. So are you kidding me? And so that, that was oh. a pretty cool night, and uh, I got to meet uh, meet the guys backstage and everything. But oh, uh, man, Excellent. the first time I ever saw them was them opening for the Scorpions when I lived mm. uh, back home in Dallas, and that was at okay. Reunion Arena. So that was an arena show, and it was you know there was sixteen, seventeen thousand people there, mm. and you know most of them were there to see the Scorpions, and they had no idea who King Zex was. Right. But by the time right. they went off the stage. Some do, people do you, had even forgotten they were there to see the Scorpions. Do you remember the albums that you saw them for? Because the one I saw was, uh, I think it was Gretchen. The one with Black Flag on it. What's which? What, what album is that? That's Gretchen Goes to Nebraska. Okay, that's that's uh -huh. the album that I saw them with Lillian Axe. And then, which do you remember which one you saw them? I uh, think it was the Dogman tour in '94. Oh, Dogman, was okay. uh, when okay. I saw him with the Scorpions, and then I saw him again, I guess five years later in uh, 1999 in Memphis, Tennessee, they played by themselves at the Daisy Theater, which is right down on Beale Street. I had never even been to Memphis before, and I just moved to Nashville, Tennessee, and I was like, road trip, King's X is coming. They weren't coming to Nashville, but they were going <laughs> to Memphis. I was like, well, it's. I think it was like three hours, two and a half, three hours. 
on the okay. I forty. I was like, that's easy. That's no sweat. Right. So I went down there, and uh, that was a, that was a great night. They played and just tore the roof off the place, man. It was awesome. Right on, man. Yeah, King's X, man. They're uh, Doug panicked all the Ty Tabor. Uh, you know. I don't know exactly how you say his last. Is it Tabor or Tabor? Tabor. Uh huh. Ty Tabor. Tabor. Yeah. And then Jerry uh, Casco on the drums. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, yeah, those guys, they come out of 1979, you know, and you know, a lot of people, they are the musicians, musicians band. Mm -hmm. That's what I've heard them at. They are. As uh, because I. Unfortunately, and I've seen musicians, musicians band. Like I went to see, when I go see Joe Satriani, or Steve I, uh, well, there's a bunch of dudes sitting there checking them out. You know, they're exactly. all musicians. You know, sure, and that's it's a musicians un- band. Yeah, and unfortunately, I, these guys have kind of got that label. I, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I haven't seen them lately, and I'm not sure what they're doing lately. But we'll, you know, we'll find out about that. But the thing is, if you think about the longevity there, 1979, and they're still going today. They're, they're they're amped up. They've been in the studio writing, I think, right now, and and ready to to release new music really soon. Especially once uh, the you know everything clears up and everything everybody gets the green light to hit the road, which sounds like it's coming pretty soon with everybody getting vaccinated. So, yes. Um, yes. Which is great news, right? Because we we all want to see that yes. and and get yeah. that stuff going. So, um. King's X. I mean, what else can I say about the band, Ray? I mean, they're they're unbelievable. I had a chance to see them uh, just a couple of years ago in 2018 over in Scottsdale, and uh, okay. that was a really fun show. I got some some footage of that. We'll look at here in just a little bit. Uh, was that the only time that you seen them? Was the, uh, the yeah. Lillian Axe show? Yes, that's the only time. And you know, uh, to be honest with you, it was in the 90s. You know, Lillian Axe, King's X. Those guys came along. Uh, Man, they just came along at bad times. I think that's what kind of killed them a little bit, you know. Uh, is they just um they they was just bad timing. And um so I didn't I kind of fell off, you know, as far as listening to them and and seeing what they're doing. And and you know, some of that music there kind of it went to the wayside, you know, which is sad. And that's why we're trying to bring this stuff back because at the, that time period was such good stuff. It was just, ah, what happened? You know, well, well, you know, Nirvana happened. That's what happened. Grunge. They didn't play it, they didn't, yeah, they didn't play it on the radio. So, uh, you know, so then that that's basically why I kind of fell off. I was a victim of that, man. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. I was a victim. No, it's um, okay. And you definitely <laughs> weren't alone in that because, and they also kind of got pigeonholed as well because they, they originally started out um, as a Christian rock band. Uh, they were mm-hmm. affiliated with um, a gentleman who was a member of Petra uh, by the name of mm-hmm. Greg Voles. And oh, yes, yes I've that's kind of that. how they got their start that they, they met through mutual friends and they started a band. They were starting a band with him and then he decided to uh, go and do something else. And then they, yeah. they ended up hooking up with uh, each other through a mutual friend and that's how they got started. And the rest pretty much has been history. They've had so many critically acclaimed albums. They've put out just about an album a year for a good amount of time during the nineties. And they're still putting out good music today. Well, I'll tell you what, James, uh, one thing I was, I I, I went and doing some research on these guys. Um, I think they got a bad rap, man, because, because they were quote unquote affiliated with the Christian or the CCM, Whatever, what do you call it? Uh, contemporary Christian music, right? Uh, scene, uh, and I think uh, because of some of their lyrics, which if you look at their lyrics, uh, they they are you know they 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 believe in what they're doing, what they're singing and saying, and you right. Know, obviously, you don't write songs about stuff like that, uh, but I think they got a bad rap because, uh, you know, because of the CCM or the Christian. Uh, uh, music, which I don't, I think it's a bunch of BS because Striper did the same thing, and that people know who Striper are, you know. Yeah, Striper's uh, and, another band that we'll be covering, I'm sure, yeah. at one time or another, because those guys are still churning out good music even to yes, this day. Are. 
Yeah, in fact, I saw um, I was at a, a memorial for one of the local musicians uh, about a year or so ago, and Timothy Gaines was there. Okay. Uh, he's the bass player. I think his name's Timothy Gaines. Oh, I hope I didn't mess that up. Timothy right? Gaines is correct. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. He was the, he's the bass player. He was there, and he was, you know, doing a little tribute to the to the local artist. Which is a very uh, I can't remember the name. I know the name of the band, but give me a second. Um, but uh, you know he would. So they're they're very relevant. But I just think uh, King's X got a bad rap because I, in my opinion, I think some of these record companies lumped him in and said, "Ah, oh, man, we're not going to play your stuff. You're too." Uh, they were a little politically correct back then. That's just my opinion. But but. Man, if you listen to the words, it doesn't, you know, it's so good. The music is is outstanding, though. The music is good. The, the lyrics still hold true, even to yeah. this day. That's Let's right. take a listen to some of that uh, that stuff I was fortunate enough to get. Uh, it's I can't even believe it's been a couple of years now. But um, this was over at BLK Live in Scottsdale, which unfortunately is uh, no longer in existence. So let's take a look at that here. This is as we roll up to the venue that night. April 20th, 2018 was this show. Mm. A, a little ways before the pandemic hit, you could say. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Oh, this is yeah, a pretty yeah, cool yeah. venue, man. I don't know if you ever had a chance to get over there and see this. It's, it's kind of set up out by a pool, and I was able to include some, some shots uh, of what? the outside so you can kind of see exactly what's going on there in the back once we get inside the venue what what is uh, the name of the venue again blk live right there you okay. get a look at the outside all right, all right. okay and yeah, then okay. It's, set, it's set around a pool so you could you could even yeah. get in the pool if it was summertime hey, now, here's, all right. all here's right. the band coming up on stage Got there nice and early, made sure we were nice and close in the front. You know, nothing flashy, Ray. Yeah. No big nope. light shows. Yeah. No pyrotechnics. Obviously, yeah. it's, a, it's a small club. It's a, it's a smaller environment there, but mm -hmm. it's all about the music with these guys. And and if you've never seen them live, you've got to catch them. Exactly. Um. They are. Uh, yeah, yeah, here we go. Here we go. That nasty sound and bass. Left-handed player, by the way. Yeah. Right there. yeah. Man, I wish I would have went to that, man. Man, such <laughs> I don't, a great I don't know how sound I missed too. That. I don't know how I missed it. But you know, I know how I missed it. Life happened. Hey, oh well, it does definitely. <laughs> you know, I I believe this might be the last concert I have actually been to, so it's okay. Life definitely does happen, but this was solid, man, all night. Oh, I love that, man. Hey, here's the thing I love about these guys. One thing is their 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 harmonies are friggin' fantastic. Oh yes. I mean, if you listen to uh, you know, I'm just gonna name a couple songs off here, James, off their Faith, Hope, and Love album. Um, there they are rocking out uh, a little bit. That they, that sound was a little bit too too muddy, as it was taken obviously with a cell phone. But uh, pretty decent looking video there. Yeah, Go ahead, but, what were you saying? I'm sorry. Oh no, no, that's fine. I, I was just saying, you know, their Faith, Hope, and Love album. We were gonna uh, talk a little bit about that. That that we are finding who we are. Yes, fantastic track song. number one. Man, I on love that song. That yes. that is one of my favorite albums. It's love, it's love. You know, da, 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 da. you know that man. I love that song. I'll never get tired of you. Um, yes, that whole album is good. Every single yeah. track on there is good. Just one after hey. another after another. Yeah. Here's a little more jam. All right, man. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. 
Super nice guys, too. I tell you, man, when I got a chance to see them in Memphis, hung out after the show right by the tour bus, and they came out and were just as gracious as ever and took the time to talk and everything. And That's after this cool, show, man. they did a little autograph session, too. So uh, got a chance to meet them there, too. So it was pretty cool That's guys, man. Just very down to earth. really cool because I ran into a couple guys that were not like that. <laughs> yes. You know, uh, yeah. You know. Look at that, Doug Panic, man. Looking for love. Yeah, yeah. Good stuff hey, imagine, right there, man. That's a little mohawk on him, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. The that that uh, that's a little bit newer stuff there. Um, just having fun but, right there, man. Look at that, Ray. Yeah. Just having fun. There's a good look at the crowd from that night. Uh, yeah. Right off, of, right yeah. by the pool. There they are signing autographs hey, afterwards. Look at you right there. Look at you right there. All right, man. Snuck in there. <laughs> hey, all right, all right, all right. And the tour Talk. bus outside on the way out. Mm. Wow. Perfect. Hey, so the... Uh, I was going to, let, let's just talk real quick here about, um, I was going to show you this. Oh yeah. So I'll never get tired of you. Great song. Oh yeah. Um, uh, the, the, you know, those first five songs, man, fine art of friendship. Oh, love that song, man. Love it. And Mr. Wilson. Uh, yes, which is, you know, you know that's a controversial song. You know, to some people, I think they uh, a little bit about abortion and stuff like that. But you know, whatever, man. They and so anyway, these guys have been. Uh, they they've had their problems. Uh, I think that they have been. Um, you know, uh, I think they just they just came out kind of at the wrong time, man. But that's why we're here. We want to promote their music. Exactly, exactly. And we're trying to make people aware of maybe some bands that you the ultimate goal of this show is to make you make some people aware of bands that you might not have ever heard of before, or maybe you only heard a little bit of. Like we talked about Winger last week with, with the 17 track. That's probably the one that most people have know them by, but have never heard any of the rest of the catalog, which is an absolute crying shame. And it's and it's probably the same way with King's X. Yes, yes, exactly. And you know, um, I think their most recent studio album was XV, which was in 2008. Now, I don't I don't know that for sure. Um, but have you do you know anything about that album, James? Or uh no, it's been it's been out for a, quite a while. They put out a lot of stuff and, and cha they changed record companies a couple times in there. Started out way back in the day with Megaforce Records and then yeah. Uh, did a little bit of time with Atlantic. They put out uh, Dog Man on Atlantic Records. Dog and, Man, uh, that's believe, another. That's another. I believe one, yeah. Gretchen was the first album that came out on uh, on okay. Atlantic Records. But um, yeah, so so these guys have been uh, just in case some of you old, uh, older cats out there, uh, these guys have been touring. You've probably seen them. You didn't even know it. Some of you guys might not even have known it. Uh, they were with, um, uh, I'll tell you here real quick. Cause I have a list here. They were with, uh, they opened up for cheap trick. That's a big time uh, band right there. Yeah. Here's another big time band, Iron Maiden, um, uh, ACDC, uh, Blue Oyster Cult, uh, Robert Plant, uh, Hurricane, which, uh, oh. we may tell, we, we, we'll talk about those guys now. By the way, Hurricane Singer is the foreigner singer now. I don't know if people Kelly know Hansen. That. Yes, sir. Yeah, Kelly Hansen. Yeah. And now I've seen uh, Kelly Hansen when at the Jar in Phoenix. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> some no you, kidding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With, with Hurricane, but anyway, they opened up for them. Uh, Scorpions. Uh, they opened up for Pearl Jam, uh, Motley Crue, and uh, they were in. Uh, they were at Woodstock '94. Which you I don't know about some pretty big acts right there, Ray. Yeah, yeah. So, so King's X, uh, regardless of their controversies and their beliefs and all that stuff, don't matter, man. The guys are freaking kick ass musicians. Yes, that's the way it should be. It doesn't matter. 
The music is good. What they say is good or uh, singing about is good. Everything's good about it. Check them out. You got to check them out. It's good stuff. Absolutely Mm -hmm. good stuff. So many albums to pick from. Start at the beginning. Start at recent and and work your way back. Uh, You won't Mm -hmm. be disappointed. It's all good stuff. So, um, right. And they they got like 12 albums, 12, like, like 12 studio albums out there. So, and they'll be hitting the road too here as soon as everything opens up and uh, you can catch them on the road. That'll give you a little bit of time to, to get uh, brushed up on some of their music, but uh, really good stuff, Ray. What can we say? Well, one more thing that just let me tell you this is that uh, they do have, let me, let me just give you a little uh, real quick here, what they're doing right now. Um, they are sorry guys here. I just want to tell you because some of you guys are going to be in these in these cities here. Um, do they have and, dates out already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do. I just I had them up. Oh man. my I goodness! Find, they have well, they're not till like like October. So hey, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just sorry, guys. Um, okay, here's their website, guys. Kingsxrocks.com. Kingsxrocks. Dot com just like it's just like it sounds kingsxrocks.com um and you know what i'm i'm just going off their website but they got some stuff in october happening so we'll see maybe maybe this, this might be old i don't know um but uh i don't know if, if things can we'll let you guys know we'll let you guys know on future shows what's up with some of these bands that we talk about um and let you know how, how things are going with them and all that stuff. And we'll uh, definitely because, have to do tour dates and, and get people up there. Yeah, that's tour what I'm dates saying. And everything yeah, as, as, yeah. as things progress and as yeah. there's the release and cause it's going to be coming soon. It, it's not too much longer. Uh, we talked last week on, on uh, our inaugural episode about uh, concerts already happening in Kentucky and other places are going to be doing the same thing pretty soon too. Mm-hmm. So uh, it won't be too much longer at all, Ray, that uh, live mu- music will be, uh, back in full force again right and make sure to check out some of these songs i mean gretchen goes in the back there's a song uh black flag and uh there's another one uh that uh black flag is an awesome song uh another one of their songs that is uh summerland summerland is a fantastic yes. tune fantastic oh, over my head fantastic song Yes. Uh I'll never be the same. That's a great. I mean, they just got so many songs. And you know what? They're 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 um one of these days we'll talk about their chord phrasings and all that stuff, but man, it's just so it's, it's it's incredible stuff. So you guys check it out and uh uh you know, we'll 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 bring more as uh, as the time goes along and we'll uh well, you know, we'll see what's going on with these guys. Yes, make sure and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can stay updated whenever we release a new episode of the Rock and Rewind podcast. And follow us on Twitter as well, uh, at Rock and Rewind. Ray, it's been another good show, man. What can we say? King's X, check them out. All right, brother. Yeah, great show. And we'll, uh, hey, by the way, next show, guys, in a couple weeks, we're going to be talking about a band. I'm sure you heard of the band Journey, but we're going to talk about a band that um, that they, well, not they, but the guitar player put together a little band called Hardline. Hardline so, is a yeah, fantastic yeah. band that came out in the early 90s. The Gioli brothers also involved with that band. I can't wait to talk about that. That'll be some really good stuff there, Ray. If you like seven string guitar, that's right up your alley. All right, there you go. So Hardline, uh, Neil Sean. And his little buddies that he uh, put that together with, and great music, guys. Cherie, hot Cherie, that's right. <laughs> the Cherie. name of the, that album is Double Eclipse. If you get a chance and to check that out, Doctor Love, <laughs> Doctor Love is also a great track on there. That whole thing is fantastic, man. Yeah. Turn it up to eleven that. and let it roll. All right, well, guys. It's another great episode. You guys have a great week and we will talk to you again very soon thanks for tuning in here on the rock and we want a podcast james Fooby, ray miranda ray thanks again man it was a blast all right man we'll see you in a couple weeks sounds good y'all have a great one we'll talk to you soon